tuned in the current and we are sitting here with the cactus blossoms from minneapolis a honky-tonk americana folk blues roots country rockabilly vintage rock and roll band from here <laughs> pseudo psychedelic <laughs> pseudo yeah all of all of the things <laughs> thank you so much for being here thanks for having us yeah yeah um loving the new record one day um I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this progression of sound. I've, I've been a fan of all your records from your dreaming to easy way. I think of uh, the song stop light kisses and compared to is it over? And um, I'm interested to hear uh, where you, where you feel like you started to where you feel like you're at now. Where are we? Yeah. And where are we going? <laughs> I don't we, know. We have no idea. <laughs> Will I ever use that synthesizer? Right, you have it. I have it. I might use it on the next record, I think. Um, yeah, I don't know. We we just have kind of kept doing what we do, which is write songs, record them with the best musicians we can find, mm -hmm. and and see where that process takes us and what kind of sounds we want to end up with is kind of decided along the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a little different every time. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting to see what we've made when it's done, I mean, you know? Mm -hmm. to uh, And, well, it's interesting for a while. We're usually kind of sick of it right when it right when we've finished, but... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, y'all are fabulous at finding great talent to surround yourself with, which is uh, a testament, of course, to our music scene, but also um, I, I love what y'all do and how you found, find the right people to make the most tasteful sounds. And um, tell me what it's like working as brothers together and, 
and having this sort of, of course, like your harmonies are very much a focal point of it. When did you learn to or realize that y'all sang so well together? Yeah, well, we, you know, when 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 we first started playing together, we were just uh, learning old country songs and there's so many great harmonies in country music and I've just always loved singing harmony, but, um, but I never had anyone to do it with. So like, uh, I had to start a brother band. I mean, right. I had to, I had to <laughs> get old enough to sing songs myself. I had to wait to for to Jack to learn how to write a song <laughs> and then say, I'm going to sing on that. Yeah. Long, long game. <laughs> it's beautiful. And y'all are from Minnesota and Minnesota has an uncannily b wonderful roots music scene. Um, I mean, you can think of Bob Dylan, of course, off the top of my head, uh, who's from Hipping, Minnesota. He's pretty good. Yeah, he's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> a big influence on, on me and a lot of people in the roots music scene. I know y'all yeah. are fans. Um, I, I, one thing I wonder is, is there something attributable to Minnesota to having such a great roots music scene? Um. Lots of time in the winter to to play guitars. I I don't know. I think there's just always been so much mm -hmm. music in in Minneapolis, especially over the years, that it's kind of you know snowballed, if you will. Yeah. Now it's a. I think it is kind of a self sustaining thing. Once mm -hmm. you get that scene going in a city, mm -hmm. um, I mean, obviously with places like Austin or Nashville mm -hmm. or something, it's there to stay and i think in our own different way we have have that here and there were plenty of people when we started playing to look up to and to go see and mm -hmm. good musicians to get in our bands and yeah i mean back in the day like i don't know 60s or maybe even 50s i think they call it nashville of the north sometimes minneapolis because there's this place called was it flame the flame the flame that brought up like all these country musicians so everyone like it was a little country club or a country like roadhouse yeah, uh, yeah. so everybody like came up here for that so i don't know maybe that kind of leaked into the musical culture up here sure and l lucky for us we have the turf club <laughs> and uh y'all y'all make that place quite a home the grand Ole opry of saint paul i think no. so basically it used to be the like punk rock right right dive bar so <laughs> I hope we didn't ruin it for folks by playing there. Absolutely not. I mean, it still can be whatever you want it to be, I suppose. It's still uh, a punk bar too, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love that you y'all do January residencies. <laughs> it's like the best. <laughs> yeah, we probably played the worst. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, we've well, we, a long time ago we played Mondays at the Turf Club every oh. week because that was... Uh, an available day on their calendar. We thought it was just great. And everyone else thought Mondays, hmm, didn't know people did that. <laughs> so we've kind of carried on the tradition of taking Mondays in the coldest month of the year to play every week in January. And um, and we've been questioning that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it would be a good time to maybe head to a warmer place. So <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we really love it. And uh, we... Last January, we couldn't do it. So it was really fun being back there lately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've caught a couple of the shows and I love seeing y'all live. It's an experience. <laughs> it, there's just a certain vibe that y'all have that is so, I don't know, welcoming and, and comforting. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> From the audience perspective, well, we're I love fun. seeing y'all live. Um, uh, yeah, let's go get back to your record one day and um, let's talk about lyricism. Um, y'all specifically write beautiful love songs. I love your love songs. And I also hear songs that kind of explore the human condition a bit. Um, with all that's happened in, within the pandemic last this year, it's affected everybody. Um, and worldwide political turmoil. Like, where do you see some of your ly lyricism fit into that? I don't know how it fits in. Um... If I'm being topical, I'm usually being pretty vague about it or or sneaky about it. Um, not super upfront lyrics about a certain situation that's happening or some political thing that's happening. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, I hope p 
people can hear some of those little kind of nuanced things in the music for sure. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. One uh, particular voice that stands out in the record is Jenny Lewis. And Jenny Lewis obviously is has been uh, quite a fixture in the music scene for many years. I've been a fan of her since I was in high school. And then I saw that she's featured on your record. How is that? How did that pairing come about? Um, well, we've known her for a few years and we've gotten to play some shows with her. Actually, the last time we played with her was opening for her at the Ryman in Nashville, which was super fun. Um, but I, I had this song idea that wasn't planned to be a duet or a back and forth thing. And it just hit me while we were making the record. I thought this is like made for two people, man and woman, to sing back and forth. And it will like become a new a new song in a way. So I got up the courage to ask her if she'd be interested and gave her plenty of off ramps if she wanted to get out of the project at any moment, but it all worked out and we're super thrilled. It's a great single, everybody. You are tuned in The Current and I am here with the Cactus Blossoms from right here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Speaking of really cool um, people, y'all have gotten to team up with David Lynch who is obviously a cult classic following on his own. And um, you all got to appear in the s only yeah. second season of Twin Peaks, which is a huge deal. Tell me about working with David Lynch. Well, yeah, he's, he is pretty cool. And he's, he's also a good weather reporter. If you've ever checked out his YouTube videos, he gives uh, updates on the current weather in LA. <laughs> <laughs> no way. It's very consistent reporting. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing if you can check it out. But um uh yeah, that was that was incredible. It was a huge um uh well, we were just big fans of the show, so to be a part of it in any way was awesome. But yeah, we had just recorded our first record You're Dreaming then and um we're touring a lot and it was just a huge encouragement and really fueled us to have him uh, just let us be a part of the project. We were actually talking about David Lynch yesterday because um, we're, we were working on some, some stuff for our single, Is It Over? And there's a curtain in the, in the music video. And I was just commenting like, isn't it incredible that David Lynch like took the red velvet curtain and turned it into his thing? Yeah. Was like, that's incredible. Just a random thought. I, it's like, yeah, such an icon of showmanship and mm -hmm. showbiz, and he kind of made it into his own weird thing. He's yeah. such a mystery. Yeah. Like, I would, yeah, like, to land on a show of the, like this guy with such prestige and, and and is just a wonderful art director, and he has yeah. his own amazing personality and aesthetic, is the fact that a Minnesota band landed on that. It was like, yeah. Yeah. It was like. Yeah, he was very, very sweet and kind to us too. So the, yeah. the whole experience was, it was awesome to make it and be there and amazing that they actually like included almost a whole song at the end of an episode. Mm -hmm. Totally blew our minds. Very much so. Um, I want, I'd love to hear more about your artistic process. Um, yeah, we've talked about a bit of, of it, um, but, you know, yes, it is simple as like, I write songs and here's how they become. Um, but take me as deep as you can into how you hear music and how it comes to fruition. Um, yeah. And and even in as growth as as a band because naturally all artists just will you know start somewhere and then progress to another place and um yeah I, um if we were to delve into really your mind as it writes songs and it, as it hears it um what's that like it's it's murky <laughs> murky water um sometimes sometimes a song just 
kind of appears almost fully formed. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, for me at least, I get little little ideas or like the start of a song, and I never even try to finish it, and mm -hmm. and that little seed just kind of like circles around for. I don't know, could be months, could be years even. And then, but I've never worked on it. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I just am able to finish it because something else comes up or some other inspiration mm -hmm. comes up and it kind of allows me to like know where that map is leading me. And I don't know, there's a, like one of the songs on the new record is called I Could Almost Cry. And it's it's kind of disjointed in a way it's not um it's not literal uh, mm -hmm. literally about anything mm -hmm. it's more emotional and and you know i guess without like it's there's plenty of ways you could interpret it so i don't really even want to give mine but i think it got to a point where it was saying exactly what i wanted to say mm -hmm. and I don't know if it's even a good song, but I like that I accomplished that with it. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I hope it's okay, but it is what it is now. And I don't know if that answers your question at all, but I guess sometimes yeah. it's just a meandering weird thing like that. And other times it's kind of like this yeah. is a, I'm writing a hit song. <laughs> but hopefully you're kind of mining your own self in some way i think like if you get a little bit of an idea even mm -hmm. if there's something about that that feels mm -hmm. good mm -hmm. to you like that you're like oh this is it's almost like seeing the tip of an iceberg or something if a little bit of a song idea comes where you're like mm -hmm. i want to figure that out like what yeah what's under that yeah. um and maybe you feel you know it's done if you've kind of i don't know maybe made something that you feel like is a is a part of you that you've let out i don't know it's yeah. hard to i guess that's how you know if something's done or not if if you just don't have any more ideas for it and it, yeah. you said what you want to say the whole thing is kind of mysterious to me still i mean mm -hmm. i wouldn't be surprised if i never wrote another song again because it's uh it's not it's not really a practice of mine it's something that's just kind of requires like inspiration yeah. for me to even get into that zone so mm -hmm. i feel that very deeply songs are like a an extension of of who we are and and how they blossom is is yeah. really kind of fun to hear the product on the other end yeah and um again i couldn't rave more about the new record i love it so much oh, thanks Thank you. and uh, uh it's called one day and um, where, what else is in store for your 2022? A tour? Um, any surprises or things and fans? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised by a surprise at this point. <laughs> um, we're just about to go out on tour for a couple of weeks. Out, mm -hmm. or I don't know when this airs, but um, it's a tour that got postponed back in spring of 2020. Mm. So it's it's pretty wild feeling to be you know, still wondering what's going to happen this year as we try to make up shows that are two years old at this point. But we're going to be touring a lot. Um, I don't know. Maybe we'll even start working on a new record hey. yeah. in between everything. Yeah. Especially if, if any tours get canceled, we're definitely going to. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, I'll be having my ears posted on all your new music and releases because I love what y'all do very much. And, uh, yeah, kudos to the new record and all the successes you've had um, uh, along the way. So, well, thanks, thanks for listening. Oh, Appreciate it. It is my pleasure. Congrats on hosting the local show. Ah, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. I love Very my happy job for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs>